For this tutorial, we're going to look at systems of inequalities. Now this is very similar to systems of linear equations, but rather than looking for specific points of intersections where the equations in the system have similar input and outputs, we're going to be looking at areas where the regions created by the inequalities overlap. Now let's look at some examples so we get a better understanding of what this really is. So to start off, let's look at example one. So here we have a system of two inequalities. We have y is greater than two, and x is less than or equal to negative one. Now let's start off by graphing both of the inequalities. So first we have y is greater than two. Now when we graph the first inequality, we'll graph it like we would y equals two, except we're gonna have a dotted line because with the inequality y is greater than 2, y equals 2 is not part of the solution because it doesn't have the equal sign with the inequality. So now we've drawn the line, now we need to draw the region expressed with the inequality. So if y is greater than 2, the solution is going to be anywhere above this y equals 2 line. So let's draw that region. So there we have our first inequality. Now let's draw our second one. So we have x is less than or equal to negative 1. So we're going to draw a line at x equals negative 1. And this time it's going to be solid because x equals negative 1, that line, is part of the solution. Now we need to shade in the area that's expressed with the inequality. So if x could be less than or equal to negative 1, it could be anywhere here in the left direction or towards the negative direction of this x equals negative 1 line. So let's shade in that area. So now as you can see, we have our two inequalities from our system on the same graph. And for our first inequality, we have this shaded region up above the line y equals 2. And then for our second inequality, we have this shaded region to the left of the line x is equal to negative 1. Now there's this area up here in the second quadrant where there's an overlap in the regions. Now that's actually where our solution's going to be. So for our system to be consistent, we want both conditions created by the two inequalities to be true. So when we do that, we're actually only left with this region right here in the green. So the solution to this particular system is anywhere in this green region and it can be anywhere along this red line as well, as long as it's still above this y equals 2 line. And then obviously, none of the points along this y equals 2 line is part of the solution, since it's a dotted line. It's not equal to. Now let's take a look at another example. Now for this time, with example 2, we're getting a little more complicated. This time we have a couple of linear inequalities. So again, like with the last example, we want to graph both of these on the same coordinate plane and then see if they have any areas of overlap. So let's start off by graphing the first inequality, y is greater than negative x plus 3. So we'll draw a line as if we were drawing y equals negative x plus 3. And that'll look like this. Now the reason why it's a dotted or dashed line is because the solution does not lie along this actual line here. y does not equal negative x plus 3, it can only be greater than that. So now let's draw the region that's expressed by the inequality. So if y could be anything greater than negative x plus 3, then we'll shade in the region above that line. So now we've taken care of that inequality. Now let's draw the second inequality, y is less than 3x minus 5. So to do that, we'll first start off by drawing it as if it was the line y equals 3x minus 5, which will look like this. And again, just like with the last inequality, it's going to be a dotted or dashed line because it's not part of the solution. The line itself isn't anyway. Now let's draw the shaded region expressed by the inequality. So if y is less than 3x minus 5, and that means the solution would be anywhere below this particular line. So when we shade that area in, 
it'll look like this. Now we have the two inequalities from our system graphed on the same coordinate plane. Now similar to having an intersection point with systems of inequalities, we're going to look at where the regions overlap. So for us, that would be like this purple area here. That's where the two inequalities share the same region. So that particular region would be the solution to our system. So the solution can be any point in that green region. Now let's take a look at another example that's a little bit more different. So this time with example three, we have a system of two inequalities, but this time those inequalities involve absolute values. So just like with all of our other systems, we need to graph both the inequalities onto the same coordinate plane and take a look at where their regions are. So let's start by graphing the first inequality y is less than or equal to negative absolute value of x plus 1 plus 4. So let's first graph that inequality. So that actual line to the absolute value will look like this. And it's a solid line because the actual line, any point along it, is part of the solution. Hence y is less than or equal to this expression. Now we also need to shade in the region that's indicated in our inequality. Well, it's telling us that y can be less than or equal to this expression. So if y can be less than anything along this absolute value line, we need to shade in the region below it. So that'll look like this. So now let's take a look at the second inequality. We have y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x minus 2. So let's graph the absolute value of x minus 2. So it'll look something like that. And again, it's a solid line too because it is part of the solution as well. But now we need to graph the region indicated by the inequality sign. Well, this time it's saying that y could be greater than or equal to this expression. So since y can be greater than, we need to shade the area above this absolute value line. So when we do that, it'll look like this. Now we have both of our inequalities on the same coordinate plane. And just like with any other system of inequalities, the solution is going to be where those regions overlap. So for our solution, we only want to focus on that overlapped region, which is indicated by this green area. So this green region, along with any point that's bordering it along these absolute value lines, would be part of our solution. Now let's take a look at just one more example concerning systems of inequalities. So for our last example here, example four, you may notice that we have three inequalities. Now this is fine because the system has to have at least two equations or inequalities. And we can actually have as many as we want. So we could have three, we could have four, we could have however many. But for this example, we're just going to take a look at how we would be graphing more than two. So again, we're going to actually want to graph all of them on the same coordinate plane. So we're going to start off by graphing this first inequality. y is less than 3x plus 5. But when we do that, we're going to graph it as if it was y equals 3x plus 5. And when we do that, it's going to be a dotted or dashed line because the line itself is not part of the solution, which is indicated in the inequality here. It doesn't have an equal to with it. Now let's shade in the region that's indicated by the inequality. So since it says y is less than 3x plus 5, we need to shade in the region that's below the line. So when we do that, it'll look like this. Now that we have that, let's do our second inequality. So this time we have y is less than or equal to negative x plus 2. So we'll start by drawing the line where y equals negative x plus 2 would be. And this time we will make it solid because the solution can lie on the line itself as well, indicated by the equal with the inequality. So now because the inequality says y is less than or equal to the expression, then that means we need to shade in the region below the line. So when we do that, it'll look like this. Now so far, we know our solution is going to be somewhere 
within this purple region here because that's where the overlapping is taking place as of right now. So let's just focus in on that region right now because we don't need the excess red or blue regions. So this is the area we're working with right now. Now we still need to graph our last inequality from our system. So let's do that. So we have y is greater than negative 4. So when we graph that, we'll graph the line y equals negative 4, but we'll have a dashed or dotted line because the line itself is not part of the solution since there is no equal to in this inequality. So now let's graph the region that's indicated by the inequality sign. So it says y is greater than negative 4. So if y is greater than this line y equals negative 4, then we need to shade in the area that's above this line. So let's do that. So now we have all of our inequalities graphed. Now just like with any other system of inequalities, we want to see where all the inequalities in the system overlap. Now we already know that this purple region is where the first two inequalities overlapped. Now we want to zone in on the area where the purple region overlaps with the yellow region. So when we take a look at that, we're left with just this green region here. So the solution to this particular system of inequalities could lie at any point within this green area, as well as along this red line, as long as it stays in between the dotted yellow line and the dotted blue line. And that's the end of the tutorial on systems of inequalities.